Hi everybody, Courtney here today to talk to you a little bit. I thought I'd just pop right in here. I'm sitting on my yoga mat about to do some practice. My husband and I ran some errands this morning and I was reading a comment or a little meme, I guess, that was talking about write down all the things that you enjoy doing that bring you happiness and then look at your day or your calendar and see how much time you are spending doing those things. And in that moment, I was like, gotta get off the phone got to go do my practice. And so this is one thing. I am a solution focused coach. I have been for many years now. I am taking a break right now, but this is one thing I always did with my clients. And when we were working on goals, it was like, what brings you happiness? And so I'm often astonished that people don't create their environments for happiness. So for me, it's practicing yoga or exercise as well meditation, reading books, spending time with my family, cooking healthy meals, um, spending time with my husband. I enjoy playing games sometimes as well. And so for I wanted to just talk a little bit about what that looks like for us in reality. So for us, one thing we have is we have a really comfortable couch with two recliners. It's attractive. I was kind of against the whole ugly recliner thing for a long time. And my husband and I are older, and so we put the heating pads back there to heat us up. We have a fireplace. When we built our house, we put a fireplace in. Um, I know that these things aren't available to everyone, but everyone can create a cozy place to sit, whether it's a comfy chair with a blanket. I have uh, twinkle lights that I put up that I'm pretty sure I sourced for free. I strung twinkle lights along my um, fireplace. I have them in a little glass bowl that someone gave me. I have in here some lights. I'll try to go ahead and show you these. So right now in my workout room, I have these beautiful little lights here that I got at a yard sale from a friend. This pretty little light over here that was in this really, I'm gonna turn this on for just a second so you can see it. This little heater that I got at Walmart for I don't know, it was like $40, and I keep it when I practice. I have here in my yoga room, I just worked out on my treadmill. I did 30 minutes of walking while having a pair of my headphones on. I think these were, these might have been a little bit more expensive because they were a work expense because I do, I used to do a lot of podcast interviews, and sometimes I had to have headphones, but they were under $100, and that's a big expense for me. I have my essential oils that I will put on when I practice, but I am very much about creating comfort and beauty in my life, but not for a lot of money. So my bed is very comfortable with cozy blankets. Um, I'm very, I have, I know some people who just like, they don't have a comfortable place to sit in their house or it's more about aesthetics than comfort. And they don't really spend the time to think about like, what would bring me joy? And I have a friend who struggled with depression and I used to go over to her house and be like, we're opening these blinds, we're lighting some candles, we're putting on some good music. But I think it's really important. You know, I talk about frugality a lot on here, but for me, frugality is really just a means to a more, uh, a life that I value. So I like to find ways to have things I value for less money because that means I don't have to work as much to have those things. So for instance, I will be doing a yoga practice on here for free with YouTube. I mean, I'm a yoga therapist. I can lead my own, but I enjoy doing them where I don't have to think about it. Today, my husband and I got up. I was feeling a little better and we went to a farm stand and we got some produce and we got some uh, canned items and gluten-free items. We went to a health food store to get some stuff that I needed. Um, we went to get horse feed and we just drove around just running errands together. We went to Whole Foods and got lunch at the deli. And I think if I had to guess, we probably spent $200 today, but we had it budgeted. I actually had a $300 budget today. And, um, you know, it's not always just about, oh, you got to save money. It's about having a budget for what you are spending and what you do value. And for us, we've created a life where we don't have any debt, including no mortgage. And a lot of people might go, well, you're really privileged you have that. But just 11 years ago, we weren't privileged. My husband was in bankruptcy. Um, I was making $15,000 a year. And it wasn't just sheer luck that we got this way. There were a lot of calculated decisions. But along the way, no matter when I was a single mama, 
um, with very little <laughs> income, raising four kids, I always tried to make the best of what I had. I always tried to make a comfortable, cozy home, whether it was coming in and turning off the overhead lights, turning on some low lights, some soft music, lighting a candle or whatever you like. I like incense as well. Um, having a little place to work out, whether it was a corner in a room, you're far more likely to work out. And I know this from 22 years of being a yoga therapist. If you have a space that you will go and actually do it. That could be a corner in a room with a yoga mat and a DVD or a video or a blanket, but having that space far more, you're far more likely to actually do the thing. So in my room, um, in both of our guest room and our bedroom, I have chairs with little side tables and lamps. One is a recliner, one is an ottoman. Um, I have a little coaster there. I have a candle in there. I don't light a lot of candles while I'm right beside them because they're not always the best for your health to even have them going unless you're using the more environmentally friendly ones. But I put little, I always have a chair by a window and make a nook. And my point of all of this is think about what you value and then make sure that you're making space for that in your life you're less likely to have FOMO or fear of missing out if you're actually spending your life doing the things that bring you happiness. And if you can't afford to do those things, like let's say what brings you happiness is traveling internationally. Well, can you read about international travel? Can you be planning a trip? Do you know there are studies that show that people gain more happiness from the planning of the trip sometimes than the actual trip? So let's say that I worked with a, a client one time that wanted to walk the Camino and um, in Spain, I believe, and I'm sorry, I'm, I'm not more educated on that, but we just started breaking it down into little steps. She called and found out how much the plane tickets were. She figured out how you do it, where you stay, what the cost would be. Turned out, she figured out how to do it and take her son along. It wasn't six months later, she was walking the Camino, had a great time but she just didn't see it as a possibility until we broke it down to little steps. And it was a year or two out and it ended up only being six months out. So if there's something that you want to do that's more expensive, try to find a way to have an inkling of that today, whether it's researching or planning, or if you want to have a cabin in the woods and you can't afford to move and maybe you're living in a mobile home around here, it's very common. Um, Maybe you bring in some greenery from the outside. Maybe you create some soft pictures. Maybe you put pictures of, um, maybe you go to the you know, flea market or whatever and you get pictures of outdoors and nature and you bring in some cabin-like elements. Maybe a water feature. But think of ways to bring in what you love into your life on any budget. And that just sparks your creativity. And then maybe plan, I have a 10 year plan to have a cabin in the woods and what's that gonna look like? My husband and I spent many, many years looking for this property um, and many, many years saving for the down payment on this property and many years kind of, I wouldn't say struggle because my husband and I are very good at finding happiness in every day. It's like we never felt like we missed out because for us, not spending $150 at an expensive restaurant, but going out back then we ate meat for catfish on Fridays at the local catfish place was just as much fun for us as the expensive meal. So we still had fun no matter what we were doing. Going to the matinee for $11 for two people was just as fun. Or the uh, on Tuesday nights, they used to have $2 night at the movies. We enjoyed that just as much as we did going to a movie on Friday nights when it was $30. So... Find ways to bring joy in your life today, no matter what the cost. And if you're not sure, put the dang phone down. Go read the book. Go watch the movie. Go play the game. Go take the walk. But make sure that every day you're spending some time finding what you enjoy. And if you're not sure, one tip that helped me when I got divorced, I was very codependent. I kind of lived my life through my ex-husband's. And if you've been... Um, brought up or raised in uh, any kind of alcoholism or, or family trauma, sometimes you lose yourself and you don't really know. What helped me was getting on Pinterest and just looking at things I liked and creating boards. And that helped me, believe it or not, that helped me learn about myself so 
much. I learned about what kind of decor I liked. I learned about, uh, and I created that through flea markets and hand-me-downs. Um, I learned what kind of travel I liked. I learned about what kind of activities I liked, what kind of food I liked. And that was such a joy. And now when I met my now husband, I was very secure in this is who I am and I'm not going to change for anybody. And he loves me for who I am and we have a great relationship because of it. Anyway, a little bit of a ramble, but my whole point here is finding joy in the everyday and um, not just it being about frugality, but about finding value. Thank you so much and have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.